Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am still in my healing emotional abuse series and we're going to talk about healing emotional abuse. So we already talked about identifying emotional abuse. We already talked about dealing with emotional abuse and today we're going to talk about healing the emotional abuse. So now that you've identified it, now that you've learned to deal with it and maybe put some boundaries in place, stand up to your emotional abuser. Now we're going to go back and heal the emotional abuse. So we're not only we're going to identify it, we are going to acknowledge it as far as in our own hearts, we're going to dig a little bit. We're going to find out the root of your emotional abuse. Also, we're going to put a little compassion to it and forgive your past emotional abusers. Because in order to heal, you have to forgive and release. And then we're going to talk about you casting down the old belief system that was developed from emotional abuse and teach you how to connect with something higher than yourself, your creator, so that you can see and he can reveal to you what it is he created, why it is he created you so that you can have the vision you need for your life to create the lifestyle and attract the healthy whole relationships in your life to help you live in your purpose. So come on, let's get started. When you know your worth and you are confident in who you are, you won't stand or will you tolerate an abusive relationship. It is when we're not groundly or richly grounded, shall I say, in the soil of our own truth. And we have not embraced our inner greatness that we allow or we become prey to an emotional abuser or toxic relationships or abusive relationships. It is easy to fall into a trap of an emotional abuser when we don't know who we are. Emotional abuse is like a form of brainwashing. And the emotional abuser intentions is to rewrite the abuser's way of thinking. It is to manipulate them and rob them of their time. See, we have to understand that time gives us power to blossom into our greater selves. And it gives us time. Time allows us the ability to accomplish our goals. And as we slay our goals and we gain the confidence to keep growing, we become successful, right? Well, the emotional abuser understands this and they understand that time is our most valuable commodity. So they set out to rob their victims of their time. And they do this by strategically breaking his or her will or their spirit through manipulation and control. They start out by nibbling at their self-work and making them second-guess themselves. Eventually, the victim begins to feel like they're going crazy. They feel like they have to walk on these eggshells. They also, from being shame-ridden in this emotional abusive relationship, begins to isolate themselves because they have buried themselves. They don't feel worthy. They have buried themselves in their wounds of humiliation and shame. Constant exposure to emotional abuse can cause have or have effects mentally and emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> physically on an individual. And it takes a toll on the victim's mind, 
their body and soul because emotional abuse is stressful as heck. It is stressful. And this stress causes our bodies to respond negatively in sickness. Soul wounds, emotional wounds cause sickness, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, name it. So people who are under constant abuse, emotional abuse, have a great chance of having heart disease and diabetes and physical or even mental illnesses. Victims of emotional abuse suffer with the wounds of humiliation and shame due to repetitive I'm sorry, criticism. And some victims have post-traumatic disorder. They also suffer with nightmares and depression and insecurity and, and feelings of worthlessness and unworthiness and shame and hopelessness. And these feelings that they're feeling is the reason why a lot of people choose to stay in these very toxic relationships and continue the cycle of emotional abuse. These victims have been brainwashed and they fear never being loved or never they they don't feel deserving of love because their abusers has shame ridden them to believe that they are worthless and that they are hopeless you're no good why are you here why do i even choose you why do i put up with you stuff like that or you're too fat ain't nobody gonna put up with that or you got too many kids i know i should have never married you you wasn't ready to be married you wasn't ready for this i knew you wasn't ready for a healthy relationship you always make mistakes you can't never get anything right all of that is emotional abuse people who have withheld their affection from you almost making you beg for affection they withhold, they put you on silent treatments. They 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 give you these um, moments of the gaslight, just fill you with insecurity after insecurity after insecurity. And there's nothing you can ever do right, say right with an emotional abuser. And so when victims have been brainwashed and they feel like I'm not worthy enough to be in this a healthy relationship or nobody who is worth anything really wants me. They tend to stay or they hop into other relate another relationships trying to pacify their emotional wounds. They ignore red flags, hoping that this new relationship will soothe their emotional pain. You know, Healing from emotional abuse takes a lot of courage, but it can be challenging. It can be very challenging. And a lot of victims find it hard to disconnect from the wounds of their emotional abuse. They have fallen for the lies of their emotional abusers and their manipulation tactics. And the healing process poses a greater challenge when a victim has been raised in emotional abuse. Their parents were emotionally abusive. And uh, this is the sad part, is a lot of parents don't even know they were being emotionally abused and a lot of children don't know it because it was this their dysfunctional norm. It was their dysfunctional norm. So they really don't, they, you know, didn't identify it. So I've had people tell me, my clients especially said, you know, I really didn't realize I was being emotionally abused. They didn't even connect with me because they thought they were in an emotionally abusive relationship. Very few. There's a lot of them, you know, find out they're in an emotionally abusive relationship and they reach out. But there are some people reaching out because of some other stuff and they didn't realize that they were really in an abusive or uh, emotional abusive relationship or raised by emotionally abusive parents because it was just normal for them. It was settled. And they didn't realize it, but they couldn't understand why they couldn't get ahead, why they were self-sabotage, why these things were just these cycles. They couldn't break these cycles because they didn't identify it. They didn't know it. It was normal to them. So once a victim has made up in their minds that they can no longer tolerate emotional abuse, 
then they open themselves up for an opportunity to rewrite their story and become the person that God created them to be. And I want to offer a few steps. If you decided to take your power back in a relationship and say, enough is enough, and I am ready to move forward and become the person that God created me to be. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. I can do this. I do not have to continue to be a victim to this emotional abuser. I'm going to tell you how to, once you decide to walk away or once you decide to take a stand in your relationship and set boundaries, and the person has decided that they are going to respect your boundaries, because if a person hasn't decided to respect your boundaries, then you have to walk away from a relationship because it does not serve you. If you really want the healing process to take place, one of the first things you have to do is forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself for allowing an emotional abuser to rob you of your precious time. You have to forgive yourself for allowing someone to make you feel unworthy. Even if you walk in the relationship feeling unworthy and you had no self-esteem from previous relationship or even from your childhood, I made a choice. And, and, and this is the good thing is giving yourself, be compassionate on yourself. Because I walked into something that was familiar to me. Or it wasn't really familiar, but I had some wounds that attracted this person in my life. Because if I didn't have the wounds, then I couldn't tolerate it. And so these wounds usually come from a pre from previous pain. So I'm going to allow myself time to heal. So I'm going to have compassion on myself. I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not going to do it. I am forgiven for that relationship. And because my emotional abuser wouldn't be an emotional abuser if he didn't have his own set of emotional wounds, no matter how bad he made me feel, no matter how much he cheated on me and made me feel like dirt, I am going to forgive him. That is now his issue. I am taking my power back and I am choosing to heal on purpose. I am choosing to win on purpose. I am making a different choice. I am changing my mind about my circumstance. I am rewriting my story. I am forgiving. I am forgiving. The second thing I want you to do is pat yourself on the back right now. Pat yourself for having the courage to rewrite your story. You know how many people stay in unhealthy relationships because they are scared. Their abuser have taken so much control of their lives. They rule their lives. They have given their power away. And they believe everything the abuser said. Well, nobody wants you. You're so stupid. And the only reason why you got this is because of me. It, they believe that stuff. And so they say, today I want you to pat yourself on the back for having the courage to rewrite your story. I want you to stay focused moving forward. You cannot drive forward living in the rear view mirror of your life. The past has nothing to offer you but lessons, lessons, and more lessons. You are strong. You are strong. It takes a strong person to endure what you have endured and have the courage to walk away. It takes a strong woman, a strong man to do that. Don't focus on whose fault it is. Just be grateful that you got out or that you gained the courage to woman up in your relationship or man up in your relationship. And be kind to yourself and give yourself room to grow. You are not perfect. You're just perfectly flawed. Okay? You're just perfectly flawed. Ain't nobody perfect. And and because the truth is, if you were perfect, you wouldn't end up in that relationship anyway. And although that person may have tried to make you feel they were perfect, they're not. Because if they were perfect, they wouldn't be trying to make you feel so imperfect. So they're not perfect either 
And I want you to understand that everything they ever told you was wrong. When they made you, they said things that were not true. When they said you were dumb, you were stupid, you were, you, you, you know, you couldn't do this enough, you couldn't do that enough. Nobody's gonna ever want you. They lied to you. And they had to lie to keep you under their control because they fear if you walk away from them that nobody wants them. They have the problem and they projected their issues onto you. But it doesn't mean it wasn't, it was true. They lied to you. And I need you to swallow that pill so that you can continue on your journey to heal. Understand that your emotional abuser's tactics was to keep you from blossoming. And everything they said to you was to manipulate you and to control you. And every time your abuser made you second guess your worth and made you feel like you were losing your mind. Oh my God, make you feel like you had to walk on eggshells to be with them. They did that to keep you in the to keep control over you. But I want you to know that everything you need to become the person you were created to be, that God gave you and you own within yourself. Just like the sun has everything it needs to shine, the birds have everything they need to fly and to live in the air. Like the fish have everything they need to live in the water. We can't live in water, but isn't it funny how everything they need to live and navigate in the water, everything they need to protect themselves, they have within themselves, and everything you need to become the person that you were created to be, you own within yourself, and you have to believe that. Your creator does not make anything. This is this is the thing I, I tell my clients all the time, that, you know, there are sometimes people feel like they are worthless, but God don't make junk. Why? This is the thing. If you grab something, you say, I'm going to put together something. I'm going to make these centerpieces to be beautiful on a table, whatever your talent is, whatever you can make, you make to work and succeed for whatever reason you made it for. And that is the same thing that God did to you. He gave you everything within yourself to win and become successful. Don't waste time on people who does not add value to your life. And don't waste time thinking that the person that abused you and the person that tried to dumb you, dumb you down, belittle you. Don't buy into their tactics. Don't buy into it. Know who you are. And as you begin to grow and blossom, you will embrace your inner champion because it's in there. You may not see it today. You may not see it today, but you will see it if you just keep moving forward. Allow your time to heal. Allow yourself time to heal. I'm going to tell you right now that you have walked away. This is a great opportunity for you to redeem some lost time. I'm telling you, start investing into your emotional health. Figure out what caused you to become prey to your emotional abuser. Why were you so vulnerable to the tactics of your abuser? Do you need to deal with some past childhood unaddressed emotional baggage? And if you know that there is some past emotional baggage, some trauma, some emotional pain that you have in your life that caused you to tolerate this abusive relationship you just walked out of, then it is really time to address it. Listen, my book, I Healed on Purpose, The Toxin, The Wounded Soul, will help you identify your emotional wounds that was created from your past experiences. It will help you identify the thought patterns and the fears that accompany those emotional wounds. And once you identify it, I help you to cast them down and to begin to build your life based on truth. And you'll begin to operate in a really good, healthy belief system. You will begin to um, operate in a very healthy belief system. 
So I'm going to also encourage you to connect with a therapist, connect with a coach, connect with the spiritual leader. Listen, when you are coming from up under the hands of an emotional abuser, they work really hard to make you feel defeated and you really need to connect with someone to help you move forward. If your insurance allows you get with get with a therapist. My my um fees right now during this coronavirus is $59 an hour. The $59 an hour I have cut my fees to a very affordable price so that people can afford them. My passion is to see people heal right now in this moment. It's to see people healed. And people are taking advantage of it. So if I were you, I would use this opportunity. I would invest into my emotional health. And if $59 is too much for you, the book is only $12. And also you have spiritual leaders who will connect with you, who will sit down with you and help you navigate as well. Okay, so take time to invest into your emotional health. This is your life and you deserve to be happy. Another uh, piece of advice I want to give you is journal your thoughts. What you reveal, you allow yourself to heal. So write, 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 write as these things, as your fears and stuff begin to come up or just thoughts of, you know, times in your relationship that really hurt you. Talk about it in your journal. Write it out. Get it out of you. Get it out of you. And listen, when those things begin to come up in your mind, say, I forgive you. I forgive you, Jimmy. I forgive you, Jim Bob. I forgive you for telling me that that day. I forgive you for embarrassing me in public. I forgive you for cheating on me. I forgive you for not coming home those nights while you were sleeping with somebody else and made me feel worthless. I forgive you for calling me fat every day. I forgive you for not eating my food or for withdrawing your affection. I forgive you. I am not the person you try to make me out to be. <laughs> but I forgive you because you really have a problem. And it's not really my problem. That really is your problem. And I'm not no longer living under the identity of your issues. Just tell them, I forgive you. Write it in the daggone journal. I forgive you. Another piece of advice I want to offer you today is don't be so quick to jump into another romantic relationship. One of the most common mistakes I find, especially for women, um, I mean too, but especially for women, they find it difficult to be alone and they start to, they have fears of being alone and fears of being unworthy and rejected. So it causes them to abandon their healing process and get into another abusive relationship. They find themselves repeating their past cycles of emotional abuse. So, and I'm going to tell you something. It is a waste of time to keep repeating the same cycle of toxic abusive relationships. They're dream snatching relationships. And I want you to know you deserve somebody who will not have problems respecting you and giving you the love that you deserve. Listen, you cannot get blood out of a turnip. <laughs> you can't get love from somebody who don't love themselves. People cannot give you what they don't got. Listen, one of the worst mistakes people make is they go in relationships thinking they can fix broken people. And the fact that you think you can fix them lets me know that you got some wounds you need to deal with yourself. This is why people keep ending up in these relationships, robbing them of their time. They can't move forward. It's because they're constantly thinking about, let me tell you something. Your abuser has spent so much time pulling you into them, keeping your mind stayed on them by filling you full of self-doubt, filling you full of insecurity, rejecting you, abandoning you when you need them the most. And that keeps your mind on them, keeping you wondering why you are not enough. They've done that. And it takes time to heal from all of that. And when you think you can fix somebody else, when you just think about those times when that person you thought you could fix only caused you to dig a deeper ditch of low self-esteem. 
and low self-confidence. And now you are fear-ridden. You can't move forward. Everything you think to do, you second-guess or sabotage it as you try to do it because you give into those fears. And that's what's going to happen if you try to keep fixing people. They'll pull you into them. They'll po you know, pose, oh, I had this happen to me and you know, I'm just not ready yet or I'm not this. And I'm going to tell y'all ladies something. I want to say this to you too. It is emotional abuse for a person to have you in a relationship or for you to say some of it. And I ain't trying to be funny. You got to own some of this. But for them to have you in a relationship and continue to lie to you about go they're going to marry you. Now I'm going to put that in a whole nother podcast and another, another YouTube video. Fall and pray to the lies of people who know what it is that you truly cherish. And they continue to lie to you and lie to you and give you false hopes. That's emotional abuse. They pull you in with these webs of lies, making you feel sorry for them. Oh, Jimmy just needed somebody to love him because his mother didn't love him. Or he's having a hard time moving forward in our relationship because his ex-wife dogged the snot out of him. I promise if you talk to the ex-wife, she will have a very different story. And if you don't watch out, you're probably going to become her. Don't, don't be so quick to hop yourself into another relationship. Take some time to heal. You need time to heal. You need time to cast down those old thoughts that came with this horrible relationship you just walked out of and heal. And I mean heal. A lot of that, I'm going to tell y'all something just from a woman's standpoint. In all these years, these 50 years, Lord Jesus, that I've made the mistake and I've watched a lot of women and even men make the same mistake is I'm so busy trying to fix somebody that I lose myself. And because I didn't take time to heal my wounds, I am falling prey to a person to treat me like crap. I have adopted this people pleasing mentality. I don't know what my dreams are because I'm so busy trying to make Billy's dreams come alive so Billy will love me and when Billy's dreams do come to surface when he ain't healed and he got emotional wounds and he got to go prove himself he's going to leave you by the wayside because a lot of times the Billy's of the world is just trying to get what they can out of you they don't know how to love you they don't know how to love themselves so stop hopping in from relationships. You know, be careful going from relationship to relationship to relationship. Sit down, heal, and I promise you, you're gonna attract. Because the law of attraction is real. You attract a person that's supposed to be with you. Another thing I want to encourage you to do is develop and or strengthen a relationship with your creator. If you don't have a relationship with your creator, it's now time to develop one. There is a higher power. And in order for you to heal, you need to tap into that higher power. And if you've already tapped into the higher power, then it is in your best interest to strengthen that relationship. And I'm going to tell you something. Your creator has your blueprint. He knows your strengths and he knows your weaknesses. He knows the plans he has for you. And when you're in sync with your creator, he'll keep you from pitfalls. The pitfalls designed to keep you defeated. Your creator's goal is to keep you to keep you moving forward. Your creator's goal is for you to become successful in fulfilling your purpose. So having a healthy relationship with God is the key to your success. He'll tell you, listen, sweetheart, Jimmy ain't for you. You don't need Jimmy, honey. Keep on going on down the road. But God, Jimmy looks like Jimmy got problems. And Jimmy won't allow me to fix his problems. And if you go to Jimmy, he, he see the enemy that's working in J Jimmy wants to rob you of time, sweetheart. He don't want you to succeed. And he's using Jimmy to lure you in. And so until Jimmy gets fixed and Jimmy decides he wants to develop a relationship with me, keep on going down the road. God will tell you that. If you listen to him, if you're obedient, a lot of times you want to work out stuff ourselves. I just don't have time to get in my word. The Bible ain't never going to lie. The principles in the Bible are real. The laws of the land were made off the principles. 
Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not. Listen, those are the laws of the land. They built laws off of it. Obviously, they believed them. I promise you, if you invest in time with your creator, he will reveal to you a vision that you will have for yourself. See, when we have a vision, we know our purpose, and we have a clear vision for where it is that we're supposed to be, our life, our vision creates our lifestyle. It creates our lifestyle. It chooses our friendship. It chooses our relationship. It chooses it. It chooses where we go and where we're not going to go. Our vision will see red flags and not be so quick to ignore them just because we need a moment with Billy. Our vision to tell our female parts to shut up. Be quiet, little Miss Susie down there. I know you fiending for Billy. A Billy don't mean you no good. Billy is a waste of time. I'm going to leave Billy alone. So Susie, you got to be quiet and hop in this, 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 sh this shower so I can move forward and be who God is calling me to be. I can't do this no more. I didn't waste it enough of my time. I can't do it anymore. So I promise you, if you develop and I know, listen, y'all, I am an emotional abuse survivor. I know. And it was when I strengthened my relationship. That's why you hear a lot of people who's come through so much talk about God, but they don't want to talk about God. Maybe you're angry with him. Sometimes we're just angry with him. We can't have this relationship because we're so angry. We have a lot of stuff happen in our life. And so we're angry with God. Lord, I'm so angry with you. I think that had you just looked out for me. And if you don't, listen, he didn't tell you to hop yourself in that relationship. Now, when you were a child and your parents decided they chose their own will, because God does not have control over our will. Just like in the beginning when Adam and Eve decided to eat the apple, they were deceived, but it was their choice to eat. Sin came into the land. And one of the first things that happened to an innocent person was Eve's son, Abel, had to die at the hand of his brother. When sin crept in, when sin crept in, the enemy ran rapid and good the bad things happen to good people and i'm gonna tell you something the bad things that are happening from generation to generation of generation is because somebody refused to take the time to heal from their past emotional wounds okay and so they passed them down from generation to generation alcoholic dad didn't heal from his alcoholism and so he brought in and caused um emotional wounds within his home and now the children are angry and they're causing emotional, they grow up and cause emotional wounds in their home. It's just a cycle that has to be broken. And how is it broken is when you connect with your creator and he will break those generational cycles in your life. I'm telling you, he broke them in mine and my children, my girls are not going through what I've been through. And when they do suffer rejection, they know how to deal with it. They know I have to reach and get some help. They utilize the fact, I guess, their mama is a coach. But also, they know how to reach out to their leaders. And it's not personal. People got issues. People are going to reject you. Reject you. Rejection came when it, long years ago in the beginning of the word. It was set in motion. So rejection is going to happen. And how we deal with it, how we deal with it makes all the difference in the world. Okay, because I want you to know your creator ain't never rejected you. Your parents may have chosen another way. They chose maybe not to connect with their creator until later. But in the childhood, maybe your dad or your mom or whatever happened, that was their choice. And today you are offered a choice. You are offered the same choice. Either you're going to break this generational cycle of wounds or you can create, you can break it or you can stay with it. And the only way to really break it is connect with your creator. One of the last things I want to encourage you to do is be patient with yourself. Healing takes time. So when your fears arise, anxiety arise, depression wants to draw you into it, I need you to take some time. Think about what you are feeling and Google the scripture. Google literature. 
go, go to on YouTube, find information that will help you navigate through your challenging emotions. Use your resources to help you through your tough time. Take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. Listen, when you hear people say stop and count one to ten and breathe in, breathe out, relax. It really helps. It is normal to have really bad days when you first set out on your healing journey. It is normal to miss Fred. It is normal to miss his sex. It is normal to miss that affection he was halfway giving to you it is even normal to miss him yelling and screaming at you because that's the attention he gave you so however you got his attention you was just grateful for it it is normal but i promise you this too shall pass the days get better <laughs> it will get better i want you to know that an abuser works hard and making you emotionally dependent on them and it takes time to disconnect but i promise you if you keep moving forward if you keep embracing your healing journey if you keep strengthening your relationship with your creator have compassion on yourself give yourself room to breathe give yourself room to make some mistakes you will get through this Listen, honey, I believe in you. Your creator believes in you. And you will get through this. You are a champion. You were designed to soar among the stars. And you can do it. You got this. You got this. You can do this. Listen, if this podcast was a blessing to you and it ministered to you, Please leave some comments below, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you heard this at. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Reach out to me at athenathecoach at gmail.com. And if you decided and said, Miss Athena, enough is enough. And I've said it's enough. But I feel like I need somebody to help me through this. Because my days are hard and I'm, I'm contemplating going backwards and I really don't want to go backwards or I'm not going backwards. But these are really some tough times and I just need you to help me navigate through this. Reach out to me and schedule you a session. Again, my sessions are only $59 right now through this coronavirus. That's very inexpensive. I'm telling you, I, I, I scratch my head myself, but it don't matter because my passion is for you to heal. My passion is for you to walk in your purpose. And listen, as a survivor of emotional abuse, I know the challenges that lies ahead. But I am here for you. I am here for you. So reach out to me. Don't forget to like and share this video. Share this video. There's a lot of people who needs to be healed from their emotional wounds. And just by you clicking share, you don't know whose life that you will be helping to change just by sharing this information. Again, thanks for listening. And remember that your future looks good on you. Change our goal.